It's uh, Saturday morning, December the 1st, last month of the year, and I've got several global end time headline news items I'd like to share with you. And uh, the first one, Monsanto and DuPont are looking to plant GMO crops in Mexico. Well, my wife and I were thinking, well, you know, Mexico may be a fairly safe place as far as uh, living when it comes, maybe not on the border towns, of course, but when it comes to uh, uh, things that the corporations are doing, like um, adding fluoride to the water in these GMO crops. But uh, it's not looking too good for Mexico. Uh, approximately 6 million plus acres, they could be planting these GMO crops. And if the Mexican government allows this crime of historic significance to happen, GMOs will soon be in the food of the entire Mexican population, not just in the area where it's being grown, but all across the entire nation. Next article. In this article, I find so disgusting. I'm sure other people share the same thing. Oscar-winning actor Jamie Foxx recently made a statement. His statement says Obama, introducing him, Obama, our Lord and Savior. Well, he uses that term very loosely. He says, our. He's not speaking of me. He is not my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ is my one and only Lord and Savior. But you know, this is just what is going to be seen in the future after the rapture when the Antichrist steps on the stage. People are going to be reacting to the Antichrist just as they are to this Obama. They're going to think that he uh, has come to save the world and he is the Messiah. Uh, I'll talk more about what I think about that in just a couple minutes. Satellites show that Iran is moving quickly to rearm Hamas. Of course, they're taking advantage of this so-called um, peace treaty, uh, the ceasefire actually is what it is, but we know that's not going to last for just a short time, so they're taking advantage of that time to rearm Hamas. Uh, terrorist group Hezbollah, okay, that's the other terrorist organization, they say that they could hit all of Israel in a future war. Uh, they say a future war. I wonder what war they may be referring to. Well, whether they realize it or not, they're speaking of the future war of Psalm, 80, uh, Psalm 83 and Isaiah 17. I'm sure maybe you've already done some studying on that, but if you haven't, or it's been a while, study it again and you'd be amazed at what we see transpiring over in the Middle East now is exactly what's in Psalm 83 and Isaiah 17. And I think it's, it's something how they're making this claim that they have weapons that could hit all of Israel in this upcoming war. Well, they're right about that. That future war is coming and it's not too far away, I, I, I do not believe. And uh, Russia is sending warships to the Gaza coast. As I, as I said just a minute ago, this so-called ceasefire is just a bad joke. I mean, there's not going to be a total ceasefire, at least not very long, and there's not going to be peace. And I want to give you my take on something. It's about this crazy fiscal cliff that you're hearing, I'm hearing, we're hearing it all over the news. 
like every hour on the hour. This is what I feel about it. The Republican lawmakers and Obama may dance on the edge of the abyss as they are. We're right on the edge, people. Throwing that fear into you. We're right on the edge. We're almost ready to go off. But they will come to some form of resolution. And with this resolution, you'll see the stock market rally in a soar in a huge way. And then Obama will be hailed by the liberal press as the man who saved America from financial disasters. And then others will join in, just as Jamie Foxx is saying, and worshiping Obama as the Messiah. The last thing Obama needs now is have his head puffed up any larger than what it is. But this cliff, okay, this financial cliff, fiscal cliff, is not a cliff at all. Okay, that is fear-mongering. This is a deadline. Okay, they're simply reaching a time, a date, a deadline that must be met. There is no cliff. But, in the future, down the road a ways, there is a cliff waiting for us and we will eventually go over that cliff. We will eventually go over it because they will no longer be able to prop the United States up. It's a facade making it look like everything is going well. If you look at the um, some props in a Hollywood studio or Universal Studios. They can make it look like you're walking down the streets of New York. Matter of fact, I saw my, one of my favorite shows growing up was uh, Leave it to Beaver. I'm sure maybe a lot of people my age uh, know what I mean. Uh, they can relate to so many things, but got to see the house. Got to see the front of the house. Looked just like it did on TV. and looked like an actual house but they took you around the side of the house and behind the house were a bunch of boxes all piled up and you had these wood uh, beams leaning up against the facade, the house, holding it up. But they're doing this artificially by printing money. Printing printing and printing and printing and borrowing and borrowing and soon it's going to come to an end. They can only do that for so long. And when we reach that point, which we are headed to very, very quickly, very quickly, then we will undoubtedly go over that fiscal financial cliff, but not right here, okay? This is, they're going to use this to make Obama look good, okay? Just making him look like something he's not, okay? It's a total facade. Don't fall for it. Uh, next week, the United Nations will meet in Dubai to figure out how to control the Internet. Yeah, they're going to regulate it. It's not just going to be in certain areas of the world. It will be worldwide. And I tell you, it's really sad. We've had such freedom on the Internet for so long. I mean, doing my weekly broadcast, other people putting out some excellent information for all to see. We're slowly but surely seeing the Internet slip through our fingers. We're losing touch. We're no longer having a grip on it. It's going to be totally regulated, but they use regulation. I like to speak in proper terms. Control. That's a better word for it. 
to where only certain things will be allowed to be put over the internet. Just as television is over in so many foreign countries, it's government controlled TV. They're only allowed to, to air certain things. Those are the, like the communist countries. Well, that's where we're headed, people. That's exactly where we're headed. Um, and getting back to this, this meeting about the internet, <clears throat> representatives from 193 nations will attend this nearly two week long meeting. So we'll have to see what comes from that because that will affect each and every one of us in some way or another. And I thought this was rather interesting. <clears throat> the first U.S. multi-family condo is to be built of used shipping containers and it's slated to break ground in Detroit early in 2013 in just a few months. This is from ABC News. Well, you know, what does that remind you of if you hear something like that? People living in uh, used shipping containers. Well, first thing comes to my mind, really the only thing does, is seeing pictures of a third world country. Can you just picture what that would look like in some of these uh, third world countries devastated with famine, disease, totally controlled by the government. People are poorer than, than poor. Well, that's where, we're, that's where we're going to, people. That's where we're headed. And you've got to remember this. God is in control of this. God is above all of this. Because, you know, speaking of this country, it's every country around the world, but the like United States, we have been blessed for so many years now. But those blessings have stopped. We are seeing the very, the very last bit of blessings that we had leave. We're now seeing curses because of how we treat Israel, the abortions, homosexuality, all abominations in the eye of God. And the Bible strictly speaks what he's done in the past because of not standing up for Israel and for alternative lifestyles, homosexuality, killing of children. If you uh, look up the false god of Molech, it was a statue that they would use back in ancient times and they would they would sacrifice their children. They would actually heat the arms of this metal statue and lay these innocent babies to cook on the arms, kill children. That's, and we didn't get to see what God has done to these nations. Sodom Gomorrah with homosexuality. What is it? He totally destroyed Sodom Gomorrah. And it's the same God yesterday and today and forever. God feels the same way about these things today as he did in the past. And what he did in the past, he will do today. And that's what we're witnessing in this country. We are witnessing not God's wrath, okay? God's wrath is coming in the seven-year tribulation, but the ones that are raptured, the born-again Bible-believing Christians will not have to worry about that. That is the wrath of God. But what we are witnessing and experiencing and seeing is the judgment of God. It's two different things. We are seeing the judgment. He is judging this country for the sins that this nation has committed. And he's bringing this nation down to its knees. He's attacking the economy. Bringing it down to a third world status. No longer a world power. We're not dominating anything now. Russia and China are taking the lead. That's one reason why I believe the United States is not mentioned in the end times in the Bible. 
we aren't mentioned. And I believe that there are many factors that lead to us not being mentioned specifically in the Bible in these last days. But I think with our economy being destroyed and going over that real fiscal cliff is going to be one of the reasons why. And I think one of the main reasons is that when all the godly people, all the Christians are taken off the face of this earth, and there's nothing but the ungodly left. I mean, what do you think that's going to do in this country when there, there are more Christians living in this country than anywhere else and you remove them? There's not going to be a whole lot left. Uh, moving on. Syria bristles as Turkey moves forward with plan for surface-to-air missiles along the border. Well, the border of Turkey. We see what we're seeing is Isaiah 17 slowly being fulfilled where Damascus overnight will cease from being a city and will be left in a heap of ruins. We're getting closer. It's looking more like actually Turkey may be the country that brings Damascus down. I was thinking few years ago that Israel would be the one, but I don't know. Uh, could be either one. Turkey is starting to move more toward doing that, so we'll just have to keep our eyes on it. Uh, and did, did you know that on Black Friday, you know, Black Friday is the Friday after Thanksgiving. I haven't seen this reported on TV anywhere, but I did find it on uh, blacklisted news. It says the U.S. Treasury increased the net debt of the United States. It's equals to approximately $211.69 for each of the nation's uh, 114,916,000 people. $211 for every family in the United States. Now it was 16, a little over 16 trillion on Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Friday it rose to 24 plus trillion dollars. See where we are now. It is mathematically impossible for us to pay this off. And you're talking about this kind of debt. I don't care what these so-called experts they bring on TV. It's a lot of nonsense. God has arranged it. He has orchestrated it to where no one, no one can fix this. It can't be fixed. Mathematically impossible. But there is a coming time when Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, returns to this earth with the saints to finish business, to take care of things, set things right, set up his government, and reign and rule. That's the only time we're going to see things fixed, permanently fixed, and have permanent peace. And here's my, my last headline. And it's a, it's a major uh, breaking headline. Uh, Saudi King Abdullah clinically dead. Saudi King Abdullah clinically dead. Iran viewing death as sign of the Mahdi's imminent arrival and Armageddon. Some pretty interesting terms, interesting words that was used from Iran. People, we are definitely headed toward the last day here, the end of the Age of Grace. And I know the, the title of my um, YouTube channel is Walking Through the Latter Days. 
And when I first opened up this channel and started, I'm not going to change the name. I'll keep it the same, but uh, it's more like um, running, sprinting through the last days. That may be a better a better name. Well, I'm going to wrap it up here. I do appreciate you watching me uh, each week. Uh, if you have any comments, anything to say, uh, keep them keep them clean. Uh, don't really need to say that. Uh, all my comments have been very very good. Uh, subscribers, thank you for subscribing for my channel. And if you have any um, thing to offer, any suggestions, any ideas, uh, just let me know what's on your mind. I appreciate it, and, li and I do like to get back to each and every one of you. Uh, you are very special and very important to me. Well, I'm Pastor Lee, uh, wishing you a great week coming up, and uh, take care, and may God bless.